following the light, sacred secretion through the body. In the great regeneration, light comes through the door of Brahma, fontanelles, and is received by the claustrum, a blood cerebrospinal fluid barrier, CSF. One, fontanelle, the door of Brahma. The fontanelle in the skull is also known as the little fountain or the opening of Brahman. In early Christian mysticism, this opening was known as Thura Aesis, the door of Aesis, Jesus. Physiologically, it is a small opening on top of the skull. Two, claustrum. Santa Claus. Neurons inside the claustrum branch out and extend around the entire circumference of the brain, much like a crown of thorns. A group of researchers from George Washington University found that the claustrum can act like an on-off switch for consciousness. In Latin, the claustrum is known as claustrum hematolicorosum, Claustrum means barrier, hema means blood, and liquor means spirit. Therefore, claustrum hematolicorosum means blood to spirit barrier, which is exactly true since the claustrum is a barrier between blood and cerebrospinal fluid. CSF is a filtrate of blood. Dr. Carey says, it is from the claustrum that the wonderful Christ oil is formed. In plain modern terms, the light acting on the substances of the brain forms cerebrospinal fluid or Christ oil. Three, cerebrospinal fluid. CSF is a filtrate of blood. In fact, there is a perpetual exchange occurring between blood, CSF, nerve or interstitial fluid, sexual vital fluids and lymph. At the claustrum blood CSF barrier, the body turns water into wine every second. Water symbolises blood and wine symbolises CSF spiritualized substance. CSF has a significant charge. It is saline, salty with minerals, and alkaline, meaning electron rich. CSF is secretly known as the blood of the lamb. The ventricles are even shaped like ram horns, hence the esoteric affiliation with Aries. CSF is the most electrically conductive fluid in the body. The breath charges CSF. The great regeneration relies on the charging and transmuting of this subtle fluid. The Kundalini utilizes that which is termed spinal fluid. It actually ionizes CSF and changes its molecular structure and consequently the basic DNA structure of the entire body. Dr. Zapatera says, CSF acts like a storage field and conveyor for light energies. So far we've seen that light precipitates into CSF at the claustrum. So what happens next? Next, CSF is differentiated into two distinct potencies by the pituitary and pineal endocrine glands. These potencies are known as the black kundalini pituitary and white kundalini pineal or lunar fluid and solar fire mineral respectively. The cerebellum controls endocrine function via the autonomic nervous system and the breath via the vagus nerve supplies the power to run the entire system. Both the sympathetic and parasympathetic nervous systems are part of the autonomic nervous system. 
Throughout the body, parasympathetic fibers meet with sympathetic fibers to form nerve plexuses, chakras. So the balance between these two systems improves chakra health. Remember, the divine conception, great regeneration, stands for the union of the lunar and solar germs in a purified virgin body. So let's take a look at the two potencies formed by the lunar pituitary and solar pineal. 3.1 pituitary gland, the lunar potency. The pituitary is biblically symbolized by Mary, the mother of the holy child. She produces the lunar seed, also known as the oil or water of life, the soul or fluid body, the silver or milk. But what exactly is the lunar germ? Let's find out. In Thinking and Destiny, Harold Percival says, a lunar germ is made of matter of the four worlds, the light world, life world, form world, and physical world. This cryptic quote is Percival describing protoplasm in a symbolic language. Thankfully, the secret teachings of all ages by Manly P. Hall gives it to us a little more plainly. It is made of carbon, hydrogen, oxygen and nitrogen. Its name is protoplasm. It is the structural unit with which all living bodies, cells, start life. The lunar germ moves with the lunar month, 13 moon cycles per 12 month solar year. It corresponds with the fluidic water body, which renews itself monthly. Summary. The lunar germ is protoplasm now known as cytoplasm, esoterically known as soma. Now we can move on to the second potency. 3.2, pineal gland, the solar potency. The pineal is biblically symbolized by Joseph, the father of the Holy Child, which produces the solar seed also known as the fire of life, the spirit or fire body, gold or honey. But what exactly is the solar germ? Let's find out. The electronic solar matter is the sacred fire of Kundalini. When we free this energy, we enter the path of authentic initiation. Samael Arm War. This quote from The Perfect Matrimony is really useful since the same author also tells us in Practical Magic that the fire of Kundalini is nitrogen. Nitrogen has seven electrons. Dr. Carey also refers to the solar germ as electrons and we already know that electrons combine to form atoms such as nitrogen and phosphorus, which are both formers of mineral cell salts. The solar germ corresponds with the fiery electric mineral body, which renews itself yearly with the sun. Summary. The solar germ is electrons predominantly taking form as nitrogen and phosphorus atoms, which subsequently forge molecules or minerals, also known as cell salts, the creators of cells. Quick recap. Light enters through the fontanelle, contacts the claustrum and precipitates into CSF. It is then differentiated into two streams by the pituitary and pineal. 
The two potencies are the lunar germ protoplasm pituitary stream and the solar germ electron mineral pineal stream. So what happens next? Well, Carey says the potencies then flow down into the red nucleus and consequently the olivary bodies into the descending tract known as the rubrospinal tract to the lateral column of the spinal cord. So let's take a brief look at these body parts.